You know, it's a good time coming before the Lord when uh, in that song, Holy, 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 you want to sing, but the lump in your throat won't let you sing. And so, Bryson, thank you for leading us, but most of all, thank you to our Lord. Amen? Amen. What a wonderful crowd we have here today. And before I speak to our seniors and introduce our speakers for our Senior Sunday, let me speak to another group of seniors right now. As you are watching online, a, a far greater crowd than we have here, though this is our biggest in quite some time, uh, to our senior adult ministry, one week from this coming Sunday night in our southern parking lot, that's next to the youth building, we're going to have a drive-in worship service. The parking lot will open at 6 p.m., at 6.30, we're going to get a fun, exciting worship experience underway. Our tagline, you'll be receiving more information in the mail, is come as you are, but stay in your car. And so come on out. Uh, we're going to go through some protocols right off the bat. If you want to amen the preacher, you've hit those high beams. If uh, you want to go really crazy with hands in the air, then get those windshield wipers going. You want to be baptized, hit that sprinkler on the front windshield. And if you honk your horn, you've just gone nuts and Pentecostal. But nevertheless, uh, come as you are, stay in your car. We want our entire SAM ministry next Sunday night, 6 o'clock, you say, could you have picked a hotter Sunday? We've got air conditioning. It's in your car. And so come on out. It's going to be great. And now to another group of seniors, uh, our youth ministers, Kelsey, Mike, and Jamie, have just done an incredible job in a uh, challenging experience this summer. Their camp was fantastic. And today being Senior Sunday, uh, there's no other group that we would have speak. Uh, I've heard Mike and Jamie already this morning in the outdoor service. You guys are in for a treat. In fact, we don't always do this for our speaker, but for these guys, give them a hand as they come on. Up. I don't, I don't know about you, but it feels like Jamie and I have no chance to follow up Mitch's little out the drive-in service thing. That was maybe the funniest I've ever heard Mitch. Especially Wilburn. with the windshield wiper thing, <laughs> Pentecostal. Yeah, you better get baptized when you see the sprinkler. <laughs> All right, well, uh, like, like Mitch said, it's Senior Sunday, but it's also on the heels of our church camp, and it just, you're, it's a very youth, youth vibe today. Yeah. Like, we're so youthful, so young, not really, we're kind of old, but uh, they still allow us to minister to the teens. Our theme last week was called Waymaker, and uh, let's show a few pictures of what happened. Uh, yeah, sounds good. So uh, this first picture, as you can see, everybody is in their lawn chairs. We're outside of the pavilion. Oh, and by the way, we were socially distanced. <laughs> um, so as you can see, them kind of leaning into the picture um, there. So uh, right before I think uh, some of our classes this morning uh, or that morning. So yeah, next uh, next shot is uh, there's, let's see, is this Ashlyn Lee? I believe that's one of our new uh, sisters in Christ. She was baptized. We had six students put on Jesus Christ this week. Amen. Praise God. And that's truly to God's glory. I mean, it, we didn't do anything. It was, it was the Holy Spirit moving through this camp. Amen. This next picture, um, we were doing some, uh, I think some calisthenics or some, no, this was during karaoke. Uh -huh. um, and uh, each, each group, each family had to come up and do some sort of fun little choreographed dance or I think, something. I think this one is the dinosaur chomp. Yeah, right? I think something like that. This is why they are teenagers and we are not. Uh, they have the energy to do so. Our <laughs> Next photo is, okay, I love this. All the mask and the, and the circle indoors. I, I don't know, I, with all the social distancing we asked of the teenagers and the safety and the mask wearing, they just handled it with the greatest of spirits. Amen. Their summer has been different and they have been lights in this Tulsa community. So if you see our teens, please thank them for honoring the elders and all, the, all that they've been through. They've been great. And every year, we can't do it without a wonderful support team. Uh, this is our banquet. This is Thursday night. And we had our hashtag mom squad um, uh, organize this, plan it, and, and decorate. They did such an amazing, amazing job. Uh, we would love to single them out and just say, well done. But we can't because they just work 
worked so well mm -hmm. as a team together. Um, and this was our um, kind of at the beach luau theme. Um, and I think SpongeBob and the crew made an appearance. No, the Christian SpongeBob. The Christian SpongeBob. Was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None, yeah. So that other stuff. Like like we said today, it's uh, we're doing Jesus is my waymaker, which was the theme of last week's camp, and we felt like it'd be a great sermon. Uh, but also, you know, with Senior Sunday on the mind, we wanted to honor them. So, uh, Jamie, what's that passage we use to develop this plan? Absolutely. Okay, so if you'll turn your Bible to Isaiah, Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Uh, this is our theme verse uh, for at our whole camp. And so, like Mike said, what we want to do this morning is we want to give a condensed version of what we went over this past week. Um, and it was entitled Waymaker. Um, and so, this is is a popular Christian song by Michael W. Smith entitled Waymaker. Mm -hmm. That throughout the, the lyrics of this song, he um, tells us that Jesus is our way throughout all different circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so each night, each keynote, each morning, um, we, we uh, took topics and we wanted to really hammer it home that no matter what your circumstance is, no matter what your uh, circumstance or situation, Jesus Christ is your way maker. And it's found here in Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. It says this, uh, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it, it, is a, it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness. And in the streams, in the wasteland. Isn't it hard sometimes to see a way out of our circumstance? Isn't it quite difficult that sometimes we can get fixated on one thing and perceivably feel like there is no way out? But this week and this morning, we want to challenge us by, um, by bringing to mind eight different characteristics that Jesus speaks into our life and says, there is a way, and it is me, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our first point is Jesus makes a way because he is my perfection. You know, um, this characteristic is for that person or persons that has to have it all together. Are you someone who takes what, Ma what Jesus says in Matthew 5, 48 um, as very little, literal? He says, Jesus says, be perfect, therefore, because your heavenly Father is perfect. Are you one who hears that and says, okay, I'm going to be perfect, I'm going to make every, every T and every uh, I all crossed and, and pointed. I'm going to make sure that this is perfection. But in your pursuit of perfection, do you strive to aim for being perfect rather than seeing Jesus who is already your perfection? Mm -hmm. In Luke 10, 38 through 42, um, it is this, um, this story where Jesus is encountering Mary and Martha. And um, they're going all throughout the preparations trying to make ready for Jesus to come. And in 40, uh, it says, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't, um, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But then Jesus says, oh, Martha, 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 you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better but it will not be taken away from her. Martha was so focused on being perfect that she neglected to see perfection in Jesus right there in front of her. And Jesus is telling us this morning, if perfection is your word, that he says, I have already been perfect. I have already been perfect on the cross. And he says, come to me. 
In 1 Peter 1, 2, um, 2, 21 and 22, it says, uh, To this you were called, because Jesus suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. So it's this word um, in Greek, it is hypogrammas. And it's literally a tablet, a stone tablet, where the teacher would begin to write what the student is to copy. Whether it was a word, whether it was a phrase, and they would learn how to write on this tablet in wax. And underneath it, the student would take it and learn how to write because of the example set before them. Jesus has already been your hypogrammas. He has already been your example. So instead of trying to aim for perfection, aim for perfection in Jesus. Our next uh, word we want to present is actually two words. And those words are approval and reward. If we are honest today, and if you're like me, we like a good pat on the back. We like someone to say, Mike and Jamie, that was a good sermon. Like, we love affirmation. And that's okay. Like, words of affirmation, that might be your love language. But I wonder sometimes if that's our main pursuit If our ultimate reward is getting approval from this world, and that's where we're filling our cup. Galatians 1 verse 10 says, hey, are you trying to please humans or of God? If I was trying to please people still, I would not be a servant of Christ. So so there's this level that we want to be kind. We want to be people pleasers, and we want a little approval back, but ultimately, if that's where you're drawing your well, it's empty. We know that with the woman at the well in Samaria, the Samaritan woman in John 4, you know she kept drawing from that well. And every day she had to fill her bucket up with water. And that is imagery, if you dig deeper into that story, her approval and reward was in those five husbands she had. It was in the current guy she was with. And Jesus looked at her and said, you want worth, you want love, you want acceptance, and you're going to the wrong places, you will run dry if you keep going to that well. well. But I am your eternal thirst quencher, only in me. If you know that your identity and worth starts in me, then you're gonna be okay when the world doesn't pat you on the back. You're gonna be okay when you don't get that approval because your ultimate reward, Psalm 16, five says, you Lord alone are my portion and cup. So if you look at Jesus and you listen to his words, I am well pleased with you. You are my son. You're my daughter. In you, I'm well pleased. Then I don't need the pleasing of this world. Like me, don't like me. Love me, hate me. Jesus said we might all be persecuted and hated if you follow him, but your portion and cup is in Jesus Christ. This next word reminds us that he is our healer. And so my question to you this morning is, have you experienced pain? And I'm not talking about the pain that you get from a splinter, even though that is very important because those hurt. (laughs) But I'm talking about pain that almost has this sense of the walls coming in on you because the pain is so great. You know, pain is a double-edged sword because it, it, it also provides a motivation, right? Because if you experience pain, you realize, hey, I don't want to experience this anymore. anymore. I'm going to run the other way, right? It's a motivator. Pain um, is an accelerator to get away and get out of dodge. But then sometimes, number two, our pain can almost seem like this word healer is not even in our vocabulary. Mm. That pain is just going to be my life and there's no way out. In, um, in 1967, there was a, a psychologist by the name of, of Martin Segelman, and he did this experiment with three dogs, well, uh, three different dog groups. And in the first group, it was a control group. The second group, um, what happened is they made a contraption, an apparatus, and on the bottom, uh, even though it's unethical now, they um, made a metal plate, and the metal plate was electrically charged. And in the second group, they provided uh, shocks 
uh, for these dogs. And the shocks would continue until they learned to hit a lever and then all pain and all shock would stop. But for the third group, there was no lever. And the shocks would come and the dogs would, as you can imagine, they, could, they would freak out trying to find a way. And there was no way out. And then to their surprise, this phenomenon happened. And it's called learned helplessness. And the dogs would literally lay down and take it. Pain can almost seem like that sometimes, doesn't it? Where we can't even fathom that there is a healer. And the walls keep crashing in. For Jesus to be our way maker, we have to understand that he provides a way through our healing. In Psalm 147 verse 3, it says this, He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Do you need a healer? Do you need someone who will be there in the midst of your brokenheartedness? Or if there's actually an ailment that is crippling you, do you need a healer to come and bind those wounds? 2 Corinthians 3, 17 says this, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I'm here to tell you today that your pain does not have to be your pain because there is freedom in Jesus Christ. There is a healer who comes and empathizes with you, comes down and binds up your wounds with you, and he is your ultimate way maker in your healing. Jesus is our healer. Mm. We're just getting started. Let's go. <laughs> so our next word is answer. He is my answer. Are you the person, and we're speaking to lots of parties today, are you the person that's seeking all the answers? Are you the person that wants all the knowledge and potentially to be the smartest in the room, to always have an answer for something? I wonder if you're also the person that that is an empty well as well because you know that you don't have all the answers. You know that God says his thoughts are greater and higher than your thoughts and his ways are higher. So I wonder if you've been the one searching for answers and wanting to be the go-to answer, but you end up with frustration and anger in that pursuit. Chris Tomlin sings a song that you and I worship with called Good, Good Father. Here's what he says. I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know that we're all just searching for answers for only that you provide. Because you know just what we need before we even say a word. His ways are higher. Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not you. I know you are smart. I know you have a lot of facts, but you don't have the answers. I have the answers. I am the truth, and no one comes to the Father except through me. We find out in Hebrews 4, 16, that because of Jesus, because of his death, burial, and resurrection, he tore the veil down, and he opened a way to you to speak directly to God. Mm. If God has all the answers, is that our motivator now that Jesus made a way? It says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we can have all the answers and be this, so that you receive mercy yeah. and grace in your time of need. Amen. What if more than all the answers you've ever wanted to know and collect in your brain more than you wanting to know the answer to your questions and life's questions, you want a relationship with Jesus Christ. You want to sit in his presence and you want to just sit before his throne as he wraps you in grace and mercy. And then all of a sudden your need for answers and knowledge go away because his ways are higher and you love just being in his presence and following his lead. Jesus is my answer. I wonder if we're stepping on any toes this morning. Because it definitely stepped on mine as we were preparing. Because this next one, I don't know if you've experienced, especially in this season that we have been in. But we have to understand that Jesus is a way maker and he is our peace. But in this season, we've had this, this word come up more and more and more. And it's called anxiety. 
And anxiety is, is one that, that kind of gives this, this imagery that everything is out of control. Have you ever felt like this? Like no matter what you do, it never seems to go your way. And the thought of starting the day leaves you feeling anxious about everything. Anxiety is described as a feeling of worry, nervousness, and uneasy, typically about an, an, um, an, an upcoming event or something with an uncertain outcome. It's like this with anxiety, right? Um, how many of you guys like roller coasters? I love roller coasters. And there typically is two responses. One, the response once you get in the roller coaster and you realize you're not going anywhere. First response, woo, here we go. This ride is going to be great. Then there's the second response, not in control. I'm about to die. <laughs> Which one are you? Which one elicits this, this feeling of anxiousness? It was told to me one time that anxiety is misplaced excitement. That all we worry about is the outcome that is completely out of our control. And because of this, this thing that is to come, we get so worried. We get so uh, ramped up and anxious. And that's all we can see is, is, is what's getting ready to happen. And so for us, we, we cope by going, you know what? I bet if I can work through every um, outcome that could possibly be and probably do an X, Y, and Z, I think I'll be, I'll be fine. But that cycle traps us, doesn't it? Jesus is our peace. Look here in Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, uh, 5 through 7, and it says this, do not be anxious about anything. Come on, about anything? Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, in every circumstances, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving in your heart, Present your request to God. Why? Because the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. If you're looking for peace, if you're looking for something that transcends even your comprehension of what it could be, draw nearer and closer to Jesus. He is our way maker through our worry, through our anxiety, and through our fear. Jesus is our peace. <clears throat> our next word is, he is my stay. And uh, have you ever seen the movie Up with that, that dog, Doug, right? So Doug is the one that's always like, squirrel. Like, I, I, I don't know if anybody's a Pixar fan, but Austin Thomas feels me. Like, that dog was very distracted, right? Squirrel. And, and I don't know, we like to... We like to be very busy in this life. We're a little distracted on the daily. Have you ever been the person or seen the person that's the life of the party? They make you laugh, they make you smile. They are the one that's like, hey, I have an idea. Let's, uh, let's go to Krispy Kreme at 2 a.m. Like they're the ones that are really excited, enthusiastic, optimistic, and they're going to the next adventure because, but if, if you dig deeper into that person, their squirrel, like their distractedness, really what is happening is they are running from their own pain. Because Jesus does this thing in Psalm 23, verse 1, where he says, I'm your shepherd, O busy one, O distracted one. In me, you lack nothing. But then listen to what he says in verse 2. He makes you lie down in green pastures. Hmm. Almost like, almost like that dog where you are training it, Jamie. You stay here. I know, I know you could run over there and over there, but the person that is the life of the party and adventurous, what they're really doing is they're not looking deep within. They're not spending time. They are like a sheep going astray, and the shepherd says, just stay here. Psalm 46, verse 10, be, just be still. Be still. I know you are really an achiever and you accomplish, accomplish a lot from morning until sunlight. You entertain all the parties, 
but when's the last, last time you sat in solitude with me, in my presence, mm. and you allowed me to bring the stuff you've been running from to the surface? Yeah. Because I'm your shepherd. In me, you lack nothing. If you would just sit in solitude, let me be your shepherd. I'll lead your way. You don't need to run anymore. You can stay in these green pastures with me. This next word, um, man, I tried really hard. When I was in high school, I played this, this sport uh, called football. You may have heard of it. And to uh, play football, you kind of have, uh, you kind of have to work hard to be a strong person. Well, with me being of my stature, uh, five ten, well, with cleats five eleven, well, six foot, um, what I would do is I would work as hard as I could to be the strongest person on the line because I was going up against guys six one, six two, one one time a six six nose guard, and I had to try as hard as I could to beat that guy. But you know something is I tried to do that all by myself. I tried to be in the weight room and I tried to outwork my teammates and I did it all myself. And there were times where I was exhausted and I was tired. And in fact, many times I injured myself because I just tried to, I just tried to push as hard as I could. And my strength lied in myself. With Jesus being our strength, we have to realize that we are not the strong one. We have to realize that we are not doing the heavy lifting. We have to realize that Jesus is our strength. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was an illustration that, that Mr. Will did in this lesson, and I love the illustration because you had two uh, um, guy athletes who had a, a pole, and it was wedged between their hands and their foot. It was not going that way, and the same was not going this way. And there was this little girl who was right in the middle, and Mr. Will said, okay, I want you to pull these, these poles together. So she muscled up and... Uh, and she wasn't moving these poles, actually a little bit because they were PVC and they bend. But um, she really tried, but they weren't coming together until we used a little science. And, and Mr. Will brought out this long, long string, and he attached one side. And then he looped it around this one, and he looped it around that one, looped it around a couple more times, and he handed her the string. And all he said was, pull. Pull. So she grabbed the string and she began to pull. Uh, she tried a little hard, but it wasn't as hard as the first time. And the more she pulled, the closer and closer the pulls became. And they were trying to keep them apart, but it didn't matter. She held the string. Are you trying to be strength or to be strong by yourself? Or are you going to rely on the way maker, the string? To be your strength. To be the one who has and carries the load for you. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10, it says this. But he said to me, <laughs> my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made strong in my weakness. Mm. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ, we could stop there, man, so that Christ's power may rest on you. Will you allow Jesus to be your way maker and be strong for you because you don't have to be? Our final word today is that he, Jesus Christ, is our purpose. On this Senior Sunday, I know our graduate seniors have been planning what college they wanted to go to, and, and they've achieved that goal this fall. Um, and it'll look a little different, but they're excited to go to college. Also, they might be like, what's my major? What's my career going to be? Am I going to have a, a husband and wife? Am I going to have children? Am I, am I going to have the house of my dreams and the city of my dreams with the per perfect white picket fence and, and a dog? a little dog and the children running around and we, we start to just imagine our future 
And that's exciting. We want to surround these graduate seniors in the excitement of their future, but also you know that I'm going to preach to that. Because is, it, is your purpose anything about you? Mm. It, does, does your life's purpose, should it be about you? Because the last time I checked, Jesus would go up in Matthew 4 to the apostles, Andrew, Peter, and say, hey, I see that you're fishermen. You got a good line of work, but I'm going to make you fishers of men. And I want you to drop your nets at once and follow me. And I want you to leave all of your life's pursuits and the purpose you set out for yourself. And I want your purpose to be for me now. Ephesians 2 says we are God's workmanship. We are his masterpiece. We are his handiwork Amen. created in Christ to do his good works. Matthew 5, you're the light of the world. And we're like, okay, so people are going to look at me. I'm going to be a light and have a big purpose and I'm going to have a legacy. Let your light shine so they glorify your Father in heaven. If your life's purpose has been horizontal, I'm going to ask today that you, whether you're a graduate senior or an adult looking to move to the next portion of your career or maybe be in the top friend in your friend group, whatever your purpose is, if it's not vertical, if, it, if your purpose is not about making Jesus known, knowing him yourself and making him known, I'd ask that you make that light shine back vertically. Amen. So Jamie, there's a lot of words up here yeah. for our audience. So I don't know if this is one of you, if this is a lot of you. But I'm imagining in the size of this room and those that are watching at home that one of these have, have pinned you, have pricked your hearts. Or maybe one of you can say, you know what? I actually struggle with a lot of those. And those actually become my banner, the, the thing over my head, rather than the name of Jesus. And we get so fixated on these words. And they even, they even become our identity. Hmm. But Jesus is all of these because he himself alone is our way maker. Hmm. The Holy Spirit has spoke today. And Jesus reminds us in Isaiah 43... We forget the former things, our need for approval, reward, our anxiety, and our lack of peace. We forget the former things. We don't dwell on the past. He says, see, I'm doing a new thing in you. I am making a way for you. I don't know what your struggle is, but he says, I'm going to lead you out of your wilderness and out of your wasteland if you would trust me. I had six students. We had six students say, I don't really want to guide my life anymore because that is an empty well. Everything that I've pursued, those six students said, I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a baptistry. And I will speak boldly to you today. This is not about baptism. This is about you giving your life to Jesus, not just in the waters, but if you gave your life in baptism years ago, maybe you've still been seeking some of those things we addressed. Yeah. And he wants to make a way for him to be the center of everything in your heart. So if you need to give your life to him in baptism and have your sins washed away and then have the Holy Spirit in you so that he can actually guide your thoughts and words and you don't have to be the answer anymore. That's right. He's your answer. He is your way maker. You can respond to ministry at theparkcoc.org. Please let our elders know how they can pray for you. Or you can come to the back today and we have shepherds that will point you to the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. Let's all respond to the message in our own way today as we stand and sing.